Marion Nichols, often called as Polly Nichols, was born Mary and Walker on the 26th of August 1845 at Das Court, off Shoe Lane in the city of London. On the 16th of January 1864, when she was 18, Polly married William Nichols in the Church of St. Bride's Fleet Street, where a plaque on a wall inside the church now commemorates their union here. Over the next five years, Polly began drinking heavily after knowing her husband had an affair. In September 1880, the couple separated and Mary moved out of the family home. In October 1887, Polly lived in Flower and Dean Street Whitechapel area by doing various jobs. In the early morning of August 1888, at around 2 a.m., Polly was heavily drunk, staggering around Brick Lane. It was reported at this hour that Polly met a man who then led her to go to a secluded gateway called Bucks Row. At 3.30 a.m. on August 31, 1888, Charles Cross, a delivery driver, discovered Polly's body and alerted the police. Her throat was cut. Annie Chapman was born Eliza and Smith in 1841. She was a short, plump, ashen-faced woman who led a troubled life, facing poverty and homelessness. Like many of the women in the area, Annie supplemented her income she obtained from crochet work and making and selling artificial flowers with prostitution. Chapman married twice and had children, but her marriages were unstable, and she separated from her second husband, John Chapman. While living at the lodging, she often suffered from brushes, a sign of domestic violence she received from two men known as Harry the Hawker and Ted Stanley. On September 8, 1888, a little before 6 a.m., John Davis, an elderly resident of 29 Hanbury Street, came downstairs, his eyes reeling back in horror. In the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street, he saw the mutilated body of Annie Chapman lying on the ground between the steps and the wooden fence. Her head was turned towards the house and her clothes had been tugged up above her waist, exposing her red and white striped stockings. A handkerchief was tied around her throat when it was cut. Elizabeth Stride was born Elizabeth Gustafstadter on November 27, 1843 in Stora Tumley Head, Sweden, relocated to London in February 1866. One of her reasons for relocating was due to her employment in the domestic service of a gentleman who lived near Hyde Park. On March 7, 1869, Liz married John Thomas Stride, a ship's carpenter from Sheerness, who was 22 years her senior. By March 1877, Liz was separated from John. She worked as a cleaner and was known to have cleaned two rooms at her lodging house at 32 Flower and Dean Street, for which she was paid sixpence. A laborer named William Marshall saw Liz that night in the company of a man standing on the pavement opposite number 58 Burner Street at 11.45 p.m. Liz was kissing the decently dressed individual before the man said to her, you would say anything but your prayers. Liz's body was discovered at around 1 a.m. on Sunday, September 30, 1888 by Louis Deemschutz, the steward of the International Working Men's Educational Club. Catherine Edhauser Kate was born in Graisley Green, Wolverhampton on April 14, 1842, and soon after followed her parents to London. By 1857, both her parents had died, which resulting in her going back to Wolverhampton and stayed with her aunt at Bilston Street to work. She then moved to Birmingham and stayed with her uncle to work as tray polisher at a firm in Lake Street. She started a relationship with Thomas Conway. They then moved to 71 Lower George Street, Chelsea, London, but by 1880 she left Conway to live in East London. On September 29, 1888, Kate was arrested after getting drunk and falling asleep on the street and was taken to Bishopsgate Police Station. She was released at 12.55 a.m. by P.C. George Hutt. Kate walked on Church Passage toward Allgate. Around 1.35 a.m., Joseph Lewindis saw Kate talking to a man of medium build with a fair mustache wearing a loose-fitting pepper and salt color loose jacket, a gray peaked cloth cap. At 1.44 a.m., Kate's mutilated and disemboweled body was found lying on her back on Mitre Square. Mary Jane Kelly was born in Limerick, Ireland, in around 1863. It was claimed that Kelly came from a family of well-to-do people. When Kelly was around 16 in 1879, she reportedly married a coal miner named Davis, who was killed in a mining explosion. In 1884, Kelly apparently left Cardiff and relocated to London, where she briefly worked for a tobacconist in Chelsea before securing employment as a domestic servant while lodging in Crispin Street, Spitalfields. On April 8, 1887, she became acquainted with 28-year-old Joseph Barnett, who worked as a fish porter at Billingsgate Market. Unemployed laborer George Hutchinson, who knew Kelly, reported the two had met at about 2 a.m. on November 9th on Flower and Dean Street. On Frawl Street, she was approached by a man aged about 34 or 35. They later went to her place. On the morning of November 9, 1888, Kelly's landlord sent ex-soldier Thomas Bowyer to collect her rent. Bowyer found Kelly's mutilated body on her bed. 